What, what can you tell me about this man? He's a beautiful human being. Well, I mean, he's if, gorgeous. Look at him. I know. I mean, if he wasn't married. <laughs> <laughs> we at the moment what is this right now area? this is i mean the break out there is bowls and rock piles um i don't know if this is considered like the rock piles bowls harbor but yeah the all the all the runs into the canal over there and then comes out to bowls and yeah. manoa bowls huh? uh what's that actually? ala moana bowls ala moana yeah, yeah yeah okay correct is this your local <clears throat> Yeah, this is where I grew up over here and Kaisers and Rock Piles. Yeah. Cool. Start off at kind of at Rock Piles and then you make your way to like Kaisers and Bowls after. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you gotta earn your stripes. <laughs> yeah, you gotta earn your stripes. Uncle sent you, sent you back. <laughs> right, right. You also have to like only pedal to a certain point and then you can't go beyond that when you're younger. Oh, yeah, you know, when you're younger, you want, you know, when you're starting out, you're definitely on the inside, you know, trying to dodge the uncles and not be in their way and just be respectful and, you know, Try to catch whatever you can on the inside and then you work your way up for sure but is there still you gotta put in your time for sure is there yeah. still that level of respect and etiquette in the water today oh for sure definitely yeah especially at bulls i would say so yeah that's good mm -hmm. cool and um how big does it get you it can get very pretty big on the south shore <laughs> got someone making comments. Got un 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 uncle making comments. <laughs> Brother Blue. <laughs> He's known each other for long? Yeah, yeah, yeah. long so enough to not drop in on him. Yeah. <laughs> Pay my dues. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, Dean's a... Even though I'm just a boogie boarder. Hey, you're a human being as yeah. well, you know? Come on. Yeah. We're a human word, being. Right? Exactly. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. Thanks. You're, a, you're a beautiful human. <laughs> what is it? Oh, there we go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. What does the ocean mean to you? The ocean means everything to me. It's um yeah, my safe place, my happy place. I'm always here every morning, you know, whether it's like you know, two feet, eight feet, uh, I I'm out here, you know, like and uh yeah. Just I, I, I need it. Ocean therapy every morning. Definitely, yeah. You know. Makes you a better person. Definitely. It doesn't make me grumpy. Oh, this is it right is here. It, is that yeah. it? Yeah. Is that your model? So it's got there the little go. logo there. And See that? Yeah. It's got the, I like that. It's got the D and the S embedded. Yeah, exactly. My friend Kayla made that little logo. and Yeah. Very cool. The Dean Song model. Yep. Vector. Little skegs on there. Vector fins. And... Nice. Yeah. So if you want to get a sick model, get the DS. Bro. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. This guy's nickname is known as Triple D. Did you guys see his DS? I told him the logo should have been three little Ds, like D, 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 but that's all right. That's okay. D's the man. We Dean Song. Yes. Lovely to meet you, Steve Lovely Shooter. to meet you too. We nestled in this little shop of yours. Uh, I can't stop looking around. It's a <laughs> real feast for the eyes. Right on. <laughs> and um, so what would you describe your shop as? Um, it's mainly a curated gift shop specializing in small design goods. Mm -hmm. um, try to bring in stuff from around the world. But right now we have a lot of products um, from Japan. And then, um, yeah, just the quality and craftsmanship of, like, Japanese products. It's like, for me, it's uh, kind of hard to beat. So, yeah, I tend to gravitate towards the Japanese goods. Mm. Always of a very high quality. High quality. High yes. quality. Yeah. 
Quality, not quantity. Exactly. Yeah. So, Dean, let's talk about you as okay. a young man growing up uh -huh. in Hawaii. Are you are you born and bred? Um, yep. So, born and raised here. Grew up in this area pretty much, maybe like five minutes away from here. And, um, yeah. Good upbringing. Very good upbringing, yeah. Yeah? Yep. So, growing up as a kid, what were you kind of into? What, surfing, hey, skating? I started maybe surfing like around the age of like 13 or 14 but i think before that i was kind of into like skateboarding and riding bike a lot like bmxing um yeah and then i got into surfing and then yeah that just took over and i never yeah stopped since mm. then yeah the bug got you yeah the bug got me so that would have been in like what the late 90s bmxing uh i would say no before that i'm kind of old actually okay cool <laughs> yeah, the same age. Yeah. How old is you? i'm 45 okay so it might have been maybe yep. the later 80s maybe yeah i'm 48 so <laughs> yeah. we're we're of that generation <laughs> the, the the generation that we're building these like homemade jumps with bricks right 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 and right, right. bits of wood yeah. and then getting our friends to lay down right trying to jump bunny over, hop over them. Body hop. right 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 that's exactly. a bunny hop <laughs> those were the days right? yeah in terms of surfing mm -hmm. um uh, well so i started bodyboarding when i was 13 um yeah i was about 13 or 14 i would say seventh grade maybe yeah and that's when i started Bodyboarding. Yeah, is tagging it, along with my cousins and like, yeah, just jumping into the water with them. Down at the main beach here, there's loads of bodyboarders. Yeah, just that so I started off at Rock Piles. Okay. And then I went over to Kaiser's and then Bowls. And yeah, that's kind of where I grew up. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, seems a natural progression to, yeah. to get in the water on a bodyboard first and then. Yeah. Well, I still bodyboard. Do you, do you still bodyboard? Yeah, I still bodyboard. You still boogie board. <laughs> I still boogie board, yeah. But I do surf a lot too. But yeah, That's my main cool. thing is bodyboarding, especially when the waves are a little bigger. Nice. So like, yeah, bodyboarding. Yeah. You got to keep that stoke alive, right? I do. It's pretty crazy. I still feel like a ground, you know, like I'm frothing every day and like I'm jones into being in the water every day. Like, yeah. <laughs> I do it mainly for exercise too. Okay. It's definitely a good workout, you know. You get okay. two, three hours in every morning. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it keeps you in shape. So that was the leisure side of things. You, you know, bodyboarding and then progressing onto surfing. But when you had finished school, mm -hmm. what did you, what was like your career path? So I've probably been bodyboarding. So like since, like I said, like when I was like 13, 14, and I'm 45 now. So probably about 30 years. But there was like maybe like a five year break that I took from bodyboarding. Um, and I was DJing a lot, so that kind of took over my life, Ooh, and nice. I became a night owl. So I wasn't in the sun at all. And I was very pale and <laughs> very ghostly, <laughs> like, very ghostly looking. Um, Seems we all went through a bit of a bit of a house period. Yeah. Oh yeah. Deep I, house. I love deep house. Yes. And that's what I was playing. A lot of deep house, a lot of drum and bass, a lot okay. of electronics. Yeah, electronic music. Cool. Yeah. Uh, back in the vinyl days, or we, we had it gone on to CDJs? Yeah, DJs? so at one point, I think I probably had maybe like about 10,000 records. Wow. Yeah, and I probably still maybe have, I, I donated a ton of like drum and bass records, and um, I probably still have like maybe a couple thousand records upstairs and a, and a good selection down here too. That's cool. Yeah. So strictly ever, vinyl. Do you ever dust them off and give them a, a spin? Uh, once in a while. Yeah. 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 Okay. And w when did you decide to sort of move into what what you do? Like, yeah, the retail space and um, when when I started DJing, I wanted to um, learn more about audio and producing and stuff. So I went to school for audio engineering in Hollywood. And so after I did that, I wanted to come back home to uh, open up a music studio to help out, like, you know, up and coming uh, artists from Hawaii. Um, and doing that, I kind of like got a little burnt out, you know, like you listen to like a song like maybe a hundred times and, you know, it just kind of gets to, you know, and I, I kind of just figured out, okay, maybe this is not for me, you know, even though I went to school for it. That's cool. Hollywood, eh? Yeah. And you studied sound engineering? 
How, how many years did that take? Uh, that course was just like a year. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty fast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And did you ever get to use it? I, it you know, yeah. in a work environment? Oh yeah, for sure. When I moved back, um, yeah, I got to do a bunch of cool projects. I uh, worked with a bunch of cool artists, and yeah, I've uh, done a lot of stuff for uh, video games too. When I moved back. Oh, right. As in uh, sound bites or... Uh, making music, actually, for video games. So I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Dance Dance Revolution. No. I, I, kind of a popular you... game back yeah. then. Um, so I have multiple songs for, like, a bunch yeah, of the like, Dance Dance games. Revolutions. Um, I did a song with my friend Travis. Uh, we went under the name Morgan's Corner. <laughs> and uh, I, I forget which... Um, Dance Dance Revolution it was, but yeah. yeah. It might be like the Universe 3 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So um, I, I did like maybe like three, no, maybe two or three of them. And then I also uh, um, did the voiceovers for the game too with my friend Travis. Oh. Yeah, so that was pretty fun. That's dope. Yeah. And I helped out Jin with a few commercials for information. Yeah, it was fun projects like that. Nice little yeah. side projects just to keep your creative. Yeah, yeah, and then a lot of like uh, hip hop artists down here, local hip hop artists, um, bands. But yeah, it was fun. Cool. Yeah. Any like hiccups along the way in your in your career? Any challenging moments that that you had to overcome? Um, just having consistent business, I guess. You know, with like a studio it's like never consistent you know it's like you get a job here you get a job there you know and so because of that i kind of just turned uh and doing uh i just ended up doing a mobile sound for weddings so i did that for maybe like 10 years and um that was way more consistent than doing studio stuff yeah yeah wedding wedding and uh business in hawaii is like pretty booming so yeah mm. Yeah, as a creative, I think it's uh, we've all been through that feast or famine, right? Right, exactly. And at some point, you need you yeah, need some you need consistency. some consistency for sure. Yeah. And so, no drama in your life. No drama. No, no nothing. No, I try to avoid that. <laughs> I try to stay away from that. <laughs> I'm just low key. Try to be behind the scenes, and yeah, no drama. So you just sort of like quietly gone about your business, mm -hmm. like you say, keep right. it low key. Keep it low. Key. Stay humble. Stay I, humble. I, I noticed that about you when I came in here. You're a very uh, humble person. Thank you. And there's strength in that. Um, and like you say, you can get, you can pretty much navigate life, and whatever it throws at you, mm -hmm. I suppose a lot less gets thrown at you if you're not putting yourself on out a there. pedestal right, or, or right, out there, right? Right, right. I mean, the fact right. that you designed some of those, I mean, you composed some of those songs right. for, for for the games is pretty cool, right? Yeah. I mean, that's really cool. Um, soap is like running, th running, running through his childhood all over again. What is, what does the ocean mean to you? To me, it means everything. Like that the ocean is like my happy place. You know, it's where I go every morning to like, you know, unwind and just forget about things. You know, any kind of problems that I have in my life, I just yeah, uh, it's my it's my happy place for sure. Mm. Yeah. It's where you find solace. Definitely. I think it's a pretty... I think it's like that for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people who, who are going through like really tough times, it's, right. it's somewhere they can go to. Yeah, definitely. And everybody Energize goes through and their hardships, recharge. I feel like, you know. And yeah, it's definitely... Good so what's on the cards for you? What's, have you got any plans? Not, not really anything big, but maybe producing more products. Um, I want to start maybe like getting into like bag design okay. yeah that's kind of always been my thing too so I'll, I'll make bags here and there and i'll just prototype things but i want to get maybe a line of bags manufactured mm. yeah i noticed you you brought out some little bags earlier can you oh like the leather show, show us those yeah, yeah. yeah just like some of the stuff these are cool like some of the bespoke uh, and, and you handmade these I hand make those, yeah. So those are all hand stitched, and 
uh, hand cut. No. Yeah. Very cool. So this is the direction you kind of want to steer yourself in a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I love I love making leather goods. Yeah, and I love making things for people. That's yeah, I find joy in that for sure. Mm. Yeah, I mean you can see it's meticulously put together. Uh, the stitching is absolutely amazing. Oh, thank actually. you. Actually, and a lovely color as well. Yeah, and the leather's really nice too. It's from Italy. Yeah. So I use a lot of like high end leathers and yeah. Do you work with any big brands out there at um, the moment? Um I mean I've been making things for companies. Um we do st I do stuff for the Ritz Carlton. Um I've done stuff for Instagram. Yeah. And, um right now I've been doing a lot of uh a lot of work for uh, the Renaissance Hotel that just recently opened. Your name supersedes you. Those are some pretty, <laughs> those are some pretty good clients to have. Yeah, definitely. What is your connection with Fast and and Jun and the team? Um, so I've known Jun for maybe uh, let's say probably over twenty years now. Yeah, and Jun's always he's always supported me like from way back, even before Fast and. You know, information days, he's always taking care of me. And um, I guess he came in one day and I was just kind of curious, you know, it's like, hey, you know, I was kind of curious about Vass. I didn't know much about Vass. So I just kind of asked him, you know, like, hey, you got any room on the team? You know, um, I would love to maybe rock some of the stuff. It looks like, you know, it's like it's, the company seems like, you know, they're doing cool things. And so, yeah, Jen and Macy just got me on board pretty quickly. And I was pretty stoked. And right now, it's like these vast shirts are like my favorite shirts to wear. Just the fit's perfect for me. Mm -hmm. And the quality, I feel like, is amazing. You know, like mm -hmm. I've washed this shirt probably like over 20 times and hasn't faded at all. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, and yeah, so uh, again, with your emphasis and focus on quality, mm -hmm. I think that's something that vast definitely, definitely have got right. Yeah. From a, yeah. From a quality perspective. Yeah. You know? I agree. Um, I was kind of always fascinated with small leather goods. And one day I just kind of just dabbled with it. And the first wall I made was like horrendous. It was like, 
<laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm ashamed to even show people. I kept it though, um, just to remind myself how far I've got, gotten from like that first wallet, you know. But um, yeah, I was always intrigued by you know high quality leather goods from yeah from way back. Yeah, you've kind of shifted your creative outlet from music and sound design to working with your hands and and crafting, right. essentially. Yeah. When I first opened up the store, I always knew that I wanted a product of, you know, our own to sell. So it actually started off with candle. Candle making. So, <laughs> candle making. Oh, wow. yeah. So that, that came before the leather goods. And that one, that, I mean, the, the, we had two cents and one cent was like super popular. And yeah, I, I couldn't keep those in stock. And like, I still make them here and there, like maybe a batch of 20. But they sell out pretty fast. Yeah. And it's a, it's a lavender and bergamot scent. Yeah, with the melt the wax, you know, mix the mix the fragrance oils and pour it and yeah, and package it and do the labeling and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. So that's that's yeah, that was the first product for the store. And then um then the leather goods came along after that. Yeah. How long has the store been established? Just made in April, we made eleven years. So last year we had a 10 year anniversary party and that was pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a crazy day. You're obviously downplaying it. <laughs> it's, it's pretty wild. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a pretty crazy day. <laughs> Even yours, I mean, to stay, like, how did you navigate the pandemic? Was that a tough period? So for you? yeah, definitely. But um, I guess we we're kind of fortunate because we don't rely on Japanese tourists for business, because the Japanese can get all this stuff back home, you know. So we kind of relied more on the locals and other tourists. So and and the locals really supported us, you know, during the pandemic. Yeah. So we were still booming. In, yeah, we're doing well during the pandemic. And then we launched our web store as well. I was going to say that yeah. a lot of your product moved online during the pandemic, yes. which made it way more accessible. Yes. Yeah, so that definitely helped us out. Would you say that's your primary um, channel to I would distribute say, your products? You know, I would say in-store still, our primary. Okay. Yeah. I would say maybe like about 70% in-store, maybe 30% online. And, and in terms of like targeting your demographic and getting mm -hmm. people and footfall in the mm -hmm. shop, like how have you gone about that? Is it, just have you got a strong through, social media? Yeah, presence? just mainly through Instagram. Yeah. Word of mouth and just return customers. Mm. We have a lot of like loyal customers that support mm. us. And yeah, I see a lot of them pretty often. Mm. <laughs> yeah, look, Instagram is a storefront these days, right? Exactly. And then yeah. once, once they're in the store, excuse mm -hmm. the pun, but you, like literally in your store, mm -hmm. it's generally because your storefront, you know, I, I was chatting to someone about this the other day, you know, and like Macy's and Harrods and, and mm -hmm. all the big stores uh -huh. around the world right. essentially used to put so much effort and so much investment into their store. Um, they, the way in which they curated the, the like shop, the window display, the window display, right, 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 right. right? right so you've right, got right. footfall, you got thousands yeah. of people walking past, and then right. they, they look at the the window display and right. they come into the store. Right. Essentially, that's what Instagram is. We've got thousands of people walking past your <laughs> shop front. Yeah, it's like a digital window display. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> just put a post out and just hope for the best. You know, like what a, I should be the I should be looking at the insights mm. and like yeah, checking the numbers and stuff, but. A lot of it, I think, is is also from the mentality of like, if it ain't broke, like, why fix it? Right. So if if it's doing well, right, like it's almost like why do why do we need to? I like, I think that's just what I've been doing since we opened. You know, it's just yeah. like we just do a post and just post it and just let it be. You know, and hope for the best. I think, I think as well is that your name, as I said to you earlier, supersedes mm -hmm. you and the quality of your of your work and of the product that you sell. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not going to endorse a product if you don't think it's of the standard that Definitely you would not, yeah. you would have in your store. Right. right. Play chess. Mm. Do you play board games? I like chess. I like checkers. I like card games. I like to play poker. Um. <laughs> I just recently went to Vegas and won some money. Did you? Uh, yeah. Congratulations. Video games. 
Video games, not so much. Yeah. Just the music. Just the music. <laughs> just how making you, music how for video you games. Up with the DVR stuff? Uh, my friend used to work for Konami. Oh. So yeah. 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 And, cool. and so, yeah, he got us the gig. Yeah. It's a pretty handy frame to have. Yeah. yeah. Konami. Wow. Yeah, Konami is pretty big. Yeah. So, mono in Japanese just means like things, stuff, or object. Yeah. So, when, you know, when we opened up the shop, it just, we, we didn't, it was kind of hard to explain to people what we sold. So, it was just like, yeah, we just, that, that, that name just kind of like popped up and I say, okay, that's kind of a cool name. And, you know, mm. but I, I love it. But a lot of people come in and they're like, oh, you know, mono means, uh, Monkey in Spanish. <laughs> like, like, oh, that's good to know. <laughs> I, th I think monocle, you know, <laughs> which is another great uh, publication. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. Tons, tons of monocle stuff here. Yeah. So if was saying to me that that's what Vast is trying to uh, project is, is like the monocle of oh, surfing. Oh yeah, 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 the brand, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? That Got that sense. like nice balance between street culture, street culture, beach culture, design, design, architecture, architecture travel, sustainability, sustainability. Oh, there's a there's a nice comparison that actually kind of like really hit it home for me right. in terms of the aesthetic and the message and the ethos right. essentially of the brand, right? right? And now, father, yep, husband, father. How many children do you have? Just one. Okay. Yeah, I have a five year old daughter. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's a big responsibility. Yeah. Very big. We're all dads. So oh, yeah. We can. Very cool. How, how old are your kids? Um, We've got two boys. Two boys? Six and eight. Six and eight? Wow. And Soap's got. Six and two. Six, Six and, and two? two? Oh, wow. They're kind of all like, yeah. It's got to catch up, bro. you got to have another one. One's a handful for me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm always like, wow, how do, how do you guys do with two, man? That's two. That's, <laughs> three i'm just like whoa my my one friend my one of my best friends has eight kids eight yeah, children eight kids, yeah. wow here in hawaii yeah <laughs> that's a lot of mouths to feed you were talking about how expensive that's a lot year. of mouths to you gotta feed. cook a big pot at the yeah. beginning of the week and just feed them the same food yeah. every single day do you do you ever have um sort of like product launches little get-togethers in the shop kind of we haven't had like networking events um no we haven't had any events lately, but I should start doing more mm. for sure. Yeah, just because the pandemic happened and yeah, we, we were just like, ah. Uh, but I want to do like maybe like a workshop, like a leather workshop and just, you know, maybe have like 10 people come in and make make a wallet or, you know, something kind of simple. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, you yeah. Usually sling two oh, tables yeah. along. Yeah, take, take off all the product here, put some chairs in, you know, and yeah. That's a vibe. Yeah. Should do it. Yeah. Supply all the, so you know, come. tools yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my daughter made a wallet the other day. Yeah. My five-year-old made a wallet, you know? It's like, anybody can do it. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what's the process in terms of, like, making one of these? Do you, I see some equipment here, machinery behind us. Yeah. So this guy is, like, a foiling machine. So I'll use this for, like, personalizing things, like... Um, initials or like you know like the brass stamps we make for companies will um, you know use this machine to put their logo on to the leather okay. foil it we can deboss it okay. yeah Very cool. yeah and then that's the industrial sewing machine used I use that one mainly for like larger things like bags if I'm not hand stitching it I'm gonna use that guy and then this one here is like a that's a nice little trinket, yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey soap. We could spend hours in the store. <laughs> yeah, as, as as I said when we came in, this is like totally, totally. Well, I think it's soap, so I, it's also mine. Yeah, us creators call it studios, uh, the man cave, basically. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's cool. And so, like, what sort of advice would you give a younger generation who want to get into like crafting and and making their own things like i would say just you know try it just do it you know like if i think anybody can get good at anything if they practice that you know and i wouldn't necessarily say i'm talented in making leather goods i've just been doing it for a while and 
Yeah, anyone can do it. I just ten thousand hours. Yeah, just just dive into it. You know, that's the main thing. Just like jump into it and start making stuff, and live a low key life. Live a low key life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just fly under the radar. Right. <laughs> It's a difficult thing to do these days. <laughs> we live in a world where media demands attention. I know, right? Right, right. And uh, there's a negative. Uh, there's a negative. Uh, there's a flip side. Negative flip side to that coin. Yeah, unfortunately. And uh, for me, um, it's like the more we can encourage and get that balance right between the younger generation being yeah. like stuck on mobile, right, or digital, right, and get them to to actually build something, right. Uh, if we can strike that balance, I think we're on the path to, as I've said, just a, a decent balance, yeah. you know? I think, like, things are way more accessible, too, from when I actually started making leather goods. You know, there's tons of tutorial videos. Um, it's easier to get leather. It's easier to get the tools. Like, a lot of my stuff's, like, from Japan. But now you can, you know, there's U.S. distributors for these tools. And, it's, yeah, everything's just way more accessible, I feel like. So it's a good time to, like, start, you know, I think. Yeah. Like, growing up, any mentors, any influences in your life that have kind of really helped you in your career path? Um, Probably Jun. Yeah. Jun's been in, a huge influence for me. <laughs> I actually had a poster of him in, the ba in my bathroom when I was a kid. He was writing for, I think, uh, World Jungle at the time, maybe. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, he did really well in Japan. Oh yeah, Jin still rips. He surfs so good. Yeah, he's one of the momentum guys. You know, it's like he surfs with the best guys in the world. It's like, yeah, like, you know, Jin's the man for sure. That's some nice kind words. <laughs> Dean, he knows. I always Dean tell Song. Him. I always tell him that. <laughs> But I do portable. also have a board coming out, my own model. Yeah. Now you bring this up. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to come about out that. soon. So uh, it's with Triad and Vector. So I think uh, right now I'm just trying to gather clips to do like a promo thing for the board before Sick. it releases. So. so have you had a big say in the aesthetic of it and the yeah. look, yeah, look the in the design, field? Yeah, design, have a logo. I had my, one of my friends design a logo for me. And yeah. Specific is it got a specific color? Only one color? Uh, right now, it's all uh, the colors I picked. I always like black, <laughs> so the board's black. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in terms of its design, is <laughs> did you have a say in in it's, the actual? Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's actually the board I've been writing for years too. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good board. What's the name of the model? It's the Dean Song model. The Dean Song model. <laughs> it's a DS. <laughs> the, the logo's a DS. DS, Dean Song, <laughs> yeah. bodyboard, boogie board. <laughs> You've got to get yourself one. We're going to leave all the links down below. Yeah, it's been yeah. an absolute pleasure getting to know you, Dean. Yeah, thanks. And, thanks for um, having me, man. Yeah, dude, just keep doing what you're doing. Vast appreciates you. I appreciate you. Vast, yeah. This is Dean Song, <laughs> leather maker, low-key poker player. <laughs> low key poker player like that dj <laughs> deep house video game composer music composer and, and voiceover and a boogie boarder and a boogie boarder or body boarder. body boarder. i don't know what's the correct term boogie board body board yeah i'll call it boogie board <laughs>